everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. Today's video is going to be a homeschool show and tell. The homeschool show and tell is an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted and Rest and myself. Our goal with the homeschool show and tell was to bring homeschoolers together from around the world to really be able to show that there's not one right way to homeschool. And we do that by sharing about different topics each and every month. This month's topic is actually going to be a homeschool planning. So we are all going to do a plan with me. So you can click the link in the description box to go to the playlist where all of the homeschoolers are coming together to share how they plan, or you'll be able to plan with them or see a little bit of insight into their planning. It's really, really great because you get to see so many different takes on it. And there is more than likely going to be somebody that's going to resonate with you. So I am going to go ahead and take you through planning a week in our homeschool. Now I want you to keep in mind that I am not like the biggest planner. I am very interest led, child led. We try to kind of fly by the seat of our pants. But with that being said, I have a like routine that I tend to do every Sunday night. So that is what I'm going to do is take you through that routine with me. So the first thing that I do is I pull out some of my favorite things for planning. The first of which is my planner. This year I am using the Flamingo planner. I love the colors and just the fun of it. And then it's inside my planner, but for ease of this video, I also have my free checklist by grade. So these are the skills by grade level checklist. I use these to kind of figure out what concepts I want to teach that week. And then I just have some of my favorite pens and highlighters. The pens that are my favorite are the Friction Fine Liner. I really like that they have like the paper mate type of tip. However, they're erasable. And then my favorite highlighters are the mild liners by Zebra. I like that they are not quite as bright um, and like in your face as most highlighters. So a little bit more mild, hence the name mild liner. So once I have those things out, I just go ahead and open my planner to the week that I like to use. So this is the weekly lesson plan that I like to use. It's very simple. It's exactly what I need it to be. It has the days of the week at the top, and then it has four checklist boxes. Now I use these boxes for math, language arts, our unit study, and then anything else. So either extras or maybe um, to do's. It just depends on kind of what that week is going to hold for us. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a pen. I know that this is week three for us this week. I know on Thursday night we have gymnastics. Wednesday this week my mom is actually having knee surgery. So I will be gone for a few days helping her out with that. And off the top of my head that's all I can think of. So I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. You're going to have to excuse my handwriting. This is not the easiest way to write. But I'm just trying to kind of give you an example. So we have math, language arts. unit study and then this week because of the knee surgery i'm going to have um, a car schooling category mainly because we will be schooling either in the car or at my mom's so once i have kind of my general layout and i know what the week is going to hold the next thing i do is i reference our skills checklist to see what skills i want to focus on that week i don't you can't really see that here you go let me scoot that over so I reference this page, which is the skills checklist, and I just see what skills do I want to work on with her this week. Is it, you know, maybe it's mastering math facts or just kind of whatever it is. So I just go through and look at them. So I know that this week I want to work with her on fractions. And I will explain why I'm picking fractions in a minute. So for ease of use, I am going to just highlight identify and compare fractions one half to one twelfth add and subtract fractions with like denominators and identify number mixed number fractions and impropers so those are the three math concepts i'm going to work with her on this week and then i think for language arts we are going to continue working with run on and incomplete sentences using capital letters using punctuation marks correctly 
And then I think we are going to also work on recognizing and identifying common parts of speech. So I think that's going to be kind of the gist of things I'm going to work on with her this week for math and language arts at least. So now that I know that those are the concepts that I want to work on with her, I will then go to our homeschool room and my office and pull things that I think will work well under those topics. So either we have curriculum that I want to use or we have games or we have books or some sort of hands-on resource, but I will just kind of go through and pick things that I think will work well with those concepts. And then we'll just kind of use them throughout the week. Now, unit study is very simple because I'm using our space unit study currently. So I know that this week I want to do the solar system lesson with her and I'm hoping to also get to the sun. And then in addition to those, we have a solar system model kit that Kevin would like to do with her. So what makes this super easy is I write out everything I would like to get done with her and then I just check it off if we do it. If we don't do it, it's no big deal. I can see what I have from this week and it can move on to next week or it makes it really easy for me also to add extra things that maybe we did that I didn't plan on us doing. So I can say, oh, you know what? She did a solar system puzzle. I can just jot that down and make a check mark. It makes it really easy for me to plan and record our week in one place on one piece of paper. It's just super, super simple. It's at a glance, it makes it really easy. And then what I can do is either at the end of the week or the end of the month, whenever I have spare time, I can use this to transfer my details to OneNote, which is what I use for a portfolio. If you want more about that, like if you wanna kinda of see how I do that, you can check it out in this video. Okay, so I know that that's what we're gonna do for unit study already. For car schooling, I'm going to list a few apps that I would like her to work on. So Puko is a um, language arts kind of vocabulary app. Extra math will help her with her math facts. And then we will probably also use the night sky app while we're at my mom's. We will listen to our current audiobook. And that's all I can think of right now. I'm sure I'll come up with more things as we get closer to it and as I'm actually packing for my mom's. But everything is still kind of up in the air. I don't know whether she's staying home with Kevin or going with me just yet. So I'm trying to kind of right now just list things that she could do with Kevin or I, depending on where she ends up. So this is, I'm trying my best to show you guys what I would plan, but this week is like no other week because we're not normally trying to split the household midweek because of a surgery. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk and look for resources that I think would work well for the topics that I had talked about for like the run on sentences and the capital letters and punctuation marks. And then what I do after I have all those resources is I will write those down for math and language arts in my planner. Like I said, it makes it really easy because I found when you have a lot of resources, sometimes you forget that you have them. So by me saying, okay, these are the skills that I want to work on this week and then going down and looking at my shelves, then I can just jot down, okay, this is what I want to do for math. This is what I would like to do for language arts. If we do it, fantastic. I check it off. If we don't do it, it's not the end of the world, but at least I have written down what would have worked for those topics. Mm -hmm. So now I have pulled everything that I think I want to use this week or that I would like to make a note of and I've put it on the table. Now normally I wouldn't physically pull everything and make a mess. I would just go jot down what we have on hand. But for the purposes of this video, I pulled everything so I could physically show you what I pulled. So for language arts, keeping in mind that the skills I wanted to cover are the run on and incomplete sentences, capital letters punctuation marks and common parts of speech. I pulled the word fun book 
and this is a um like a treasury of if you were a noun a verb an adjective an adverb a pronoun a conjunction an interjection or a preposition so we will possibly read through that and then i also decided to pull the language quickies from lakeshore learning these are the grammar and writing because they have a capitalization and punctuation um, center in here these are like little matching games they have the answer card so basically you have all of these little cards that are going to show different tricky titles and you have to try to see what um, you need to fix either they're correct or incorrect and then you sort them under the correct and incorrect so i pulled that for us I also pulled the complete sentence one. This is a sentence sort, so you're gonna sort by run-ons, complete, and fragments. So you just have the little titles that you're gonna sort by, and then all of the little cards where it has the sentence, and you're just gonna sort it. So I thought those two would work really well for those topics that we're gonna be learning about. And then I pulled a few games. So I have grasping grammar nouns to interjections, breaking news, which is a spelling, punctuation, and grammar game. So that just happens to be a plus that we'll be getting in other things as well. And then very silly sentences. This will be a really fun one, but it'll be a great way to talk about whether the sentence is complete, run on, etc. So that's what I pulled for our language arts. For math, I pulled two books, The Circumference and The Fraction Fair. We love these book series. And then If You Were a Fraction. Now I told you guys I would tell you why I picked fractions for this week. So Emily last week finished reading the Lemonade War book for her upcoming book club. And she absolutely loved it. She immediately asked if she could do a lemonade stand. Well, my first instinct was to say no because we live in the middle of nowhere and nobody's going to stop. And then the next day, her learner's lab class was an entrepreneurship class and she talked about a lemonade stand there and then they sent free printables and it was just like this perfect storm one thing after another and I thought, okay, you know what? While we're at my mom's, because we'll be there for at least a week, her area is a little more populated. I will let her do a lemonade stand one of the days that we're there instead of it being here in the middle of nowhere. And because I knew that she was going to do a lemonade stand, Kevin had already decided that he would help her make the lemonade and that we would do um, a lot of the, or that they would do a lot of that. And then he'd bring her over for the day that she was going to do a lemonade stand. So I know that there's two things that she could really, really learn out of this. And one is money, but I didn't want to drive home the money because I just kind of wanted that to be like the fun part of it but I thought fractions would be a really fun way to kind of tie the math into that because when they're making it, they can talk about cutting the lemons in half and the different measurements on the cups as they're filling them up and doing measurements. So I thought fractions would just be a really great kind of like reinforcer slash introduction slash let's use the real life learning to our advantage. So that's why that's the skill I picked for this week. Okay, I also grabbed our fraction um, cards that go with our power pen. This is very similar to hot dots if you know anything about them and you just press the button. Let's see what fraction is shaded and it will light up. She has that silenced right now. Let's see. Here we go. So it makes a noise if you get it right. I just thought those would be a really great thing. Maybe I'll strew them. Maybe those could work for car schooling. I don't know yet, but I pulled those. Um, the game froggy fractions, which is a card game. The Pizza Fraction Junior that we have, we don't really have to have the Junior, but we already had it, so that's the one we're going to use. And then the, this is loud, sorry guys, the Fraction Formula game, we really, really like this game. It's really fun. It's literally these big, like, beakers and all these little fraction pieces. It's a little loud, but it's a lot of fun. 
so that's everything that I pulled for language arts and math. Again, this is going to be a weird week. So we may get to none of this. We may get to all of it. I have no idea. And that's why I like planning this way because once I've pulled everything, what I do is I just come in here and I just write it down under math and language arts. So for math, I know that I have the um, fraction fair. So circumference fraction fair book. the if I were a fraction book and then I have the power pen fractions the pizza fraction game the froggy fraction game and then the fraction formula. So that is pretty much, and look, I spelled that wrong, so I was in a hurry. Thankfully these are erased, yay. And so that is pretty much my planning. So now we'll do the same thing for language arts. I will just write down all of the resources that I pulled for language arts. And that's my planning for the week. It is that simple. If we do any of it, I will check it off. If we do something that I didn't write on here initially, I will just fill it out. Like, let's say we write on here the lemonade stand because that is totally, that totally counts. And I spelled that wrong to you guys. I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. But it's literally that simple. That's how easy my planning is. It's not overkill. It's not complicated. I just make a list of things that I think we might do that I would like to get done with her so I don't forget when we're in the moment I can easily open my planner and go oh yeah I have this game let's go ahead and go pull that and play it because I find I have like decision fatigue in the moment I'm like oh man what am we gonna play next what are we gonna do next so this makes it really easy for me to just open my planner see the options that I had for us pick from one of them do it and then just check it off when we're done and there you have it. That is a look at my finished weekly lesson plan. It's very, very simple. It's not over the top. I literally just write down a list of math and language arts resources that I would like to see us get to, what lessons I wanna do or what things I wanna cover with our unit study, which this is really easy because I've already done the planning with the space unit study, so I can just write down the lessons that I wanna do and it's all already done. And then this week I have a car schooling box or a school on the go because I know that we're going to be going a lot this week. Now, normally that box would just kind of be a flex box. Maybe it's a to-do list. Maybe it's car schooling. Maybe we're doing, you know, something special. Maybe I use it to put in extra things that we're going to be doing our afternoon activities. I really do use that as a flex box. It just depends on kind of what's going on in our life. If we have a busy week, it's car schooling because I know we're not going to be around a lot. So I'll have a list of things that still kind of cover the same subjects or the same skills, but are able for us to do them in the car. Or I'll even make a list of what is in her car schooling um, area. If you'd like to know more about car schooling, I will link that up here for you guys too. I have a whole playlist of all of our car schooling stuff. So that is really it. It's super simple. I just look at my checklist. I look at what skills I want her to cover for the week or what skills I want to cover with her. I make a list of all of the resources that we have that you know, incorporate those skills or those topics. And that way it's just easy. I can open my planner. I don't have decision fatigue. I have a list of things that we can do. If we do something completely different, I just write it in and check it off when we do it. This isn't a must do list. This is a, we might get to it list. Um, and then, like I said, the only thing that I did special for you guys today is I printed this, you know, skills checklist separately because normally I just have it in my planner, but I didn't want to have to flip back and forth. I wanted it to be easy for you guys. And then I pulled everything off the shelf. I would not normally pull everything off the shelf. I would normally just either, you know, make a quick note of what is on the shelf or snap a picture with my phone, um, take my planner to the shelves with me. It just depends on what my mood is that day but it's that simple. Nothing super complicated. It's not like a super difficult process, but it's just a way for me to make sure that I am using the resources that I have, that I am covering most of the skills that were important to me to make sure that we covered in the school year and that we're still having fun at the same time. So I hope you guys enjoyed joining me this week while I planned for our homeschool. And I would love it if you would tell me in the comments how you plan for your homeschool week.